Edge of Sports on the PPI Network. This is Edge of Sports Radio. My name is Jeremiah Tittle, and we're here with Commissioner Tagliabue. Commissioner, what did you think of tonight? It was uh, 50 years. It's, it's amazing to think about. You know, it was uh, really special to be sitting up there with Bobby Mitchell because he's been such a phenomenal asset for, for professional sports, the Redskins, the NFL, and to just have him share his memories of uh, when he was traded to the Redskins by the Cleveland Browns and become the first African-American player on an NFL team in the nation's capital, that, that was something else. And, and I think the other panelists were great, too. I think it was a really good, thoughtful conversation. Something that was expressed tonight was uh, the fact that there are so uh, few African Americans in management uh, as general managers, as coaches. The Rooney role has done has, has made a change in our current landscape. Uh, uh, you told a story about that. It was really interesting. Um, how do you feel uh, the progress has been since the Rooney role? Well, I think there was a lot of progress before the Rooney Rule. I think that the rule has been successful because all of the progress that was made beginning in the mid-90s, uh, you know, six, seven years before the Rooney Rule was put in place. I think that's the critical. Like I said, uh, Dennis Green was hired in Minnesota in 1992. He hired Tony Dungy. Ray Rhodes was hired, uh, you know, after Dennis Green. So I think that rules don't make progress. People make progress. And the credit to Dan Rooney goes for the fact that he was not only the chair of that committee that created that policy for the NFL, but he's been at this issue of fairness and talent and openness and opportunity and hiring for 40 years or more, probably. Bobby Mitchell also earns our respect, I, I could say safely, that uh, because he held roles in management. Um, is there any way that we could encourage uh, more minorities in to higher levels of uh, ownership of, as we've seen with Michael Jordan in the NBA um, or in the general manager position? Yeah, I think you can do a lot of things. Most of it has to do, I think, with education, experience. Uh, I'm a big believer that if you want to be a successful in sports management, you should get some experience uh, outside of sports. I always tell young people who want to be in sports, if you want to end up in sports, you better start someplace else because in my case, I think a big part of the reason I became commissioner, frankly, was because Pete Rozelle knew that I had a lot of experience outside of sports. And uh, my sports experience was just a piece of a much bigger fabric that he and the owners looked at. So I, I think, you know, I used Harold Henderson as an example earlier, was head, our head of labor relations, came to us from the railroad industry. You know, sports business is business. It's not about sports. It's not about playing basketball or, or, you know, it's not about throwing a football or swinging a bat. It's about business. So you need to get experience in lots of other areas. And finally, thanks so much for your time. I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to ask about uh, tonight and uh, and this this 50-year mark. I mean, uh, it's really special what's happening here at the University of Maryland, and and uh, it's great that you came out to, to because you played a role in, in where we are today um, any final thoughts on on what took place tonight no I think it was a terrific program you know with Maury Povich uh, as the moderator and his father of course was one of the great great sports writers uh, voices of conscience in sports during the entire 20th century so I give uh, you know George Solomon was the great sports editor of the Washington Post and he's still doing good work putting panels like this together Commissioner Tagliabu, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Edge of Sports on the PPI Network.